Carnotaurus, the meat-eating bull, has only ever been known from a single remarkable specimen. This specimen was found over 30 years ago, but scientists hadn't given a thorough once-over of the skin impressions found smacked to the bones. A brand new paper published August 2021 shows what the horned beast's hide was really like, and it's not what Disney's dinosaur or Jurassic World would lead you to believe. To give some backstory, what we know as Carnotaurus was first uncovered on the 8th Paleontological Expedition sponsored by the National Geographic Society. The Carnotaurus specimen is a nearly complete skeleton with all the bells and whistles needed to reconstruct virtually all of it. On top of that, almost quite literally, were several patches of skin impressions. Carnotaurus was the first non-avian dinosaur fossil found with skin impressions. The world-renowned Argentine paleontologist Jose Bonaparte, who led the expedition to find Carnotaurus, discussed the skin impressions at a conference in Los Angeles in 1986. Another expedition was made to the Carnotaurus site to recover anything else that might have still been there. With this new trip, additional fragments of fossil skin patches were found associated with chunks of bone, or impressions of those chunks. These new scraps of fossil skin patches were associated with the neck, shoulder, and rib cage of the beast. Despite how important the skin impressions are for the general understanding of dinosaur, and specifically non-avian theropod dinosaur biology, very little has been written on the specimens. They've never been fully described in a paper to themselves. Until now, of course. The Carnotaurus skin comes from the right side of the animal. As it was found, the skeleton was in a typical death pose with the spine arched. It was lying on its right side owing to the level of preservation of skin on that side. The specimen was found coated in hematite concretion, a type of ultra-hard ironstone, which likely saved the entire specimen from being pulled apart by the elements as it lay buried for millions of years. Only six fragments of skin impressions currently exist, but according to paleontologist Don Lessem, the skin was essentially across the entire skeleton, even the skull. Photos of the unprepared skull surfaced online in 2019. I even made a video on it, and apparently the stuff on the right side of the skull might really have been skin impressions. That is, if the testimonies of the Cherkes and Lessim are to be believed. The authors of the new paper, Christoph Hendricks and Phil Bell, posit hypothetical skin coverings for the skull, since supporting evidence no longer exists. Jose Bonaparte is also recorded as noting the presence of these scales in this part of the skull. Photos of the skull show most of it covered in hematite matrix, and you cannot really make anything out as to what kind of scales are present. If the photos are correct, and everyone's not mistaken, then the lack of clearly visible huge scales on the face in the photos would suggest that the face scales were quite small. A recent 2020 paper on the Carnotaurus skull anatomy by M. A. Serroni and friends found evidence in the bone structure of the snout that might suggest a cornified pad of hard skin covered that area. The field photos of the skull do show some color and texture differences from the rest of the matrix on the snout, which might correspond to the inferred cornified cover. Here's a caiman of some sort. They have a mixture of scales and osteoderms. Scales are part of the outer skin or dermis, and osteoderms are lumps of bone that lie beneath the skin. Sometimes they're capped by shields of keratin, and sometimes they aren't. The smallest scales in the background are called basement scales. The real big scales that are spaced apart randomly or in a pattern are called feature scales. The patches of skin on the Carnotaurus neck don't preserve any basement or feature scales, even though these kinds of scale impressions were reported in this area by past researchers. It's possible this means this area was scaleless, but it could also be some other kind of soft tissue or something else entirely. Two patches from the torso do clearly show those itty-bitty basement scales and the large round feature scales. The feature scales don't have any special decorations or textures on the outside, they're just rounded ovals or cones. The first patch only preserves the big feature scales as the skin surrounding it has no basement scales or patterning. The second patch, on the other hand, clearly shows several clusters of basement scales as well as a pair of feature scales. Skin from the shoulder is a mold of the shoulder girdle and preserves two incomplete feature scales. 
There are some clusters of basement scales on this patch too, and are polygonal in shape despite being pretty badly preserved. The biggest patch, from the tail, is the best preserved patch and gives the best idea on how most of the body's skin might have looked. So, it turns out the small basement scales are poorly defined ellipses, which merge with the in-between tissues to form what the authors call a hummocky appearance. These basement scales vary in size and shape and don't form clusters. Groups of the basement scales are broken up by ridges that form wrinkly, vertical, stripe-like things. It's clear that the distribution of the coney-shaped feature scales is random. They're spaced out randomly too, with some being widely spaced or closer together depending on the part of the body. The basement scales, on the other hand, are pretty much uniform throughout the body. It turns out that the small basement scales in Carnotaurus skin are pretty similar to those seen in the extremely small patches of skin known from Tyrannosaurid dinosaurs. It also shows some similarities to known Stegosaur and Hadrosaur skin impressions. The size of these basement scales is what's unusual about Carnotaurus, as only sauropods have similarly sized scales on their bellies. There were no, I repeat, there were no osteoderms on Carnotaurus at all. That's a common misconception. The critter had no dermal armor to speak of. I'd like to compare the skin to the skin seen on the body of leopard geckos, but they clearly have some differences when it comes to their heads and tails. I wouldn't be surprised if the skin of Carnotaurus was semi-waterphobic like a desert gecko's is. The authors of the new paper go on to speculate on how the Carnotaurus skin functioned in life. Despite the continually increasing numbers of dinosaur skin impressions, not much ink has been spilled on trying to understand how that skin worked. We have modern animals and phylogenetic bracketing at our disposal, so until better techniques are invented, that's what you gotta use. The Cherkas compared Carnotaurus skin to that of the living green iguana and speculated it may have helped in protection during territorial bouts during mating season, but the full skin of Carnotaurus really has no similarities to iguanas, so out with that idea. It remains possible and plausible that the bigger feature scales played some role in display and coloration, but the connection between specific colors and those big scales has yet to be made. The authors were keen to compare the randomness and uneven surface of the Carnotaurus skin to that of the African elephant. They suggest it might provide a modern analog to the condition in Carnotaurus. Skin plays an important role in thermoregulation or the ability to stay cool or get warm. As a consequence of adaptation to its climate, the elephant has skin more similar to reptiles than your typical mammal and so offers somewhat of a good comparison despite the differences in physiology between an elephant and a non-avian dinosaur. The elephant skin has micrometer wide cracks that, combined with the wrinkling pattern, helps to absorb and retain moisture. Could the same thing have been going on with Carno skin? That remains to be seen. Carnotaurus remains were found in the La Colonia formation, which was a coastal floodplain with alternating periods of warm and dry cycles. It would need to be able to regulate its temperature under these conditions. These conditions, which are also shared by the modern African elephant. There are plenty of differences that make the comparison imperfect, but you know, if the shoe fits. Carnotaurus, being a huge predator, may have needed to shed heat even more than the elephants do, so having even more extreme adaptations for doing that would make ecological and physiological sense. That basically sums up the new news on Carnotaurus. The rows of crocodilian scoots and ridges seen in a lot of media depictions of the flesh-eating bull are now figured obsolete. Too bad, I kinda liked the gnarly Carno. I equally like this new gecko elephant skin Carnotaurus. Who knows what else about this elusive dinosaur will be found next. Stay tuned. Let me know what you think of the new Carnotaurus in the comments section below, and thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like and comment on this video, share it around and subscribe. While you're at it, ring the notification bell too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Want to help Edge out? Subscribe to the Patreon at any tier you like for a whole smorgasbord of delicious offerings. Many thanks to Thea Svensson, Steve Bradshaw, Staniforth Hopkins, Natty Cat, Dinosaur, Arda Bayer, Abby Smith, Henry Brennan, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Antron.
You've all helped to make this channel possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.